It's Wednesday and it's 12 o'clock and this is our second episode of the Ask Finola How. See, we've actually branded it now. So Ask Finola How and we're sticking with this idea of strategy, okay? And because I want to explore it and de demystify it a little bit so that each of you can understand it a bit more and see how to apply it to your business, okay? Let's start with this idea. And this idea is that if someone has been there before, there's got to be a map, okay? And if that's the case, there are so many entrepreneurs in the world, so surely there must be a map to success for the entrepreneur. And there is, okay? So we won't leave that till the end, we'll just state it very clearly. There is a pattern to how businesses grow, there is a pattern to how they succeed, and which is the theme of this episode, is there is a pattern for the challenges that they face. So I've worked with loads of clients over 25 plus years. I don't even want to know about the plus part of that, but, um, and across different industries. So I find this really, really curious that I kept being asked the same questions at the same point in the life of the business, okay? And there were three challenges every single time that they kept facing every single time. So that's what I want to share with you today. The other thing I wanted to share with you is that when people would kind of rock on into my office and we'd talk about where they were in their business and I'd be asked questions and all the rest of it. And what was constantly said to me was that they were kind of nervous or even sometimes kind of embarrassed by facing the challenges that they were facing. And the most reassuring thing that I could say is that's okay, this is normal. And actually, most of the time in my programs, I'm saying, that's okay, this is normal. And that really reassures me, even as an entrepreneur, in that they know that this is okay, this is normal, this is just a standard challenge. It's a challenge that everyone faces. I'm not unique, I haven't done something wrong, I've actually done it right. When I face this challenge, that means I've actually progressed. Okay, and really understand that. There are points where we hit overwhelm. There are points where we try to accomplish too much. There are points where we get lost on the way. And that is often indi an indication of growth. It's just a sticking point. And if we embrace this idea that all the sticking points are already on the map, then we're following the path. So we're okay. So let's jump right into the first one, okay? Does anyone have any ideas of what the first one could be? The first challenge that every entrepreneur faces, and they can be stuck with the longest, the first challenge that every entrepreneur faces is around identity. Now, I see this quite a lot because people often come to me for a brand or they're talking about where they're positioned and all that kind of stuff. So identity is the toughest one because it's often the piece that we think is too woolly or it's some of the stuff that we worked on last week together, which is the why, why are you here, your purpose, mission, vision, and why you're here. And it's actually the point that if you have no clarity here, your marketing will not work, your business will not work, you will end up being stuck because you'll, it will end up having, you'll be in a situation where you cannot choose the right path, know who the customer is, know what the customer wants, knows where the, you won't know where the match is between you and the right customer because you haven't spent the time of understanding why you're here in the first place. And when we understand why we're here in the first place, it allows us to do our best work ever. And that's not something that's quite ambiguous. It's actually really kind of gut reaction that fuels a proper positioning for any business. Because when you know you're where you're best attributes are, your best work lies, then you can deliver more effectively than anybody else who's only average. So think about identity. Think about if you are stuck in your business and ask yourself, do you have clarity about who are you? What do you speak about? What are you known for? What are you best at? Okay, then who can you help the best? What can you give them that helps them most? What brings you joy in doing this? So identity is also not just about our purpose, mission, vision, which we spoke about last week. It's also about 
well, what's the product or service that I'm going to create that makes my vision for my business come true? And who is, so product, so we build our product based on our mission, okay? Based on our reason for being here. We craft our product and we bring it into alignment with what we're trying to achieve in the world. The other part of identity is knowing not only who we are and what we're offering, but also who is the best fit for this? Who is the best, the customer that I can help most with this? And if I can help those customers with this product, can I make my product even better? Can I kind of spend time in this identity space that brings an alignment between me, my business, my, what I offer and my customer? Because when I bring the three of those into alignment, you have this sense of clarity. You have this sense of certainty that you know what to do next that you know that you can collaborate with your customers because they can also guide you as much as you guide them. So when we crack identity, and I need to give you some examples here. When, the reason I say that this is the first challenge for the customer is because sometimes we think it's too soul searching, it's too ambiguous, or it's not, you know, when, when we talk about in strategy, we talk about positioning strategy, you know, things like that. Whereas in actual fact, and positioning strategy is really important because it backs up the gut with data, with understanding, with understanding that there's a niche in the marketplace. But if you don't feel it, it doesn't matter what the data tells you, you won't deliver on it. So if you spend time, I worked with a company a few years ago, several years ago actually, and I found that the identity and the purpose of the business was not clear. And they stayed in that space of identity for 10 years until they sat down and said, okay, let's do this fluffy exercise and figure out and articulate what we're here for, what our purpose, mission and vision is and how we will align everything we do in how we treat our customers, how we treat our, how we create our products, how we look after our staff and build that all together and then we can move. And they moved. That's the point. This identity piece holds people in this stalled position for years if they don't face it. Big takeaway for you guys is spend the time here. It's not indulgent. It's not uh, something that you can treat lightly. Okay. So identity is number one. Mostly I feel that when you crack identity, everything else is easy. Anyway, Second challenge that every single business faces, okay? We think it's people because we think we want to scale, so we need to hire people, but it isn't. Don't make the mistake that you think that the second big challenge is people, it's not. The second challenge and the second obstacle to face and to overcome is systems. Because systems allow you to scale your business, to do things faster, to allow you more time to have live engagement, to really listen to your customers, to create that foundation that allows you to take this next leap in your business. You can't take a leap in anything, even think about a building, unless you have the right foundation in place. Now, what I mean by systems can touch lots of things. Systems can be how you issue a contract, how you uh, organize the batching of your content, it can be how you ask for testimonials when you're getting that last part of your funnel in place. It can be uh, what you standardly, how you standardly approach the delivery of every product or service you give. If you can write the manual for each process in your business or build a process in your business for every part of it, then you're ready for, to meet the third challenge, which is people. Okay, let's stay with systems for a minute. We have so much technology now, and often we will spend time on putting the technology in before we get our identity correct. We can do things like automate and batch social media and stuff, but think on this. If you batch process social media, content, communication, and everything else, and output lots and lots of content to reach audiences and all the rest of it, but if your identity is not in place, what are you doing it for? What are you creating a system for 
if you don't know what you are for, okay? Systems help you scale. Systems help you be more efficient. Systems help you do better for your customer and create spaces, space for your growth, okay? That's systems. Number three, people. There is a wonderful book that I'm going to recommend to you all now. And it's called, and it's out a while, it's called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And E doesn't stand for electronity, electronic, it stands for entrepreneurial myth. What often happens when a business grows is they get things sorted in terms of identity and they get moving along and they hire somebody, okay? And they hire somebody and that person doesn't do those things quite the way you would do them. And then you feel bad because maybe you have a customer who's calling you that's saying, well, he didn't really do it the way you did it and I much prefer dealing with you. And what happens is that may, if you don't train people properly, if you haven't written the manual from the previous challenge, which is systems, then you effectively self-sabotage. You effectively set yourself up as you scale your business. I always like to think of trying to build the entrepreneurial journey in as straight a line as possible, you know, but that diagonal going up that way doesn't work like that. Actually, what happens is energy, build business, plateau because we're putting systems in and then you jump again. But if you, you know, pull all the energy in and push your business, you hire someone to give you some more time because you're wrecked, right? Because you want to push to the next stage. And if they don't do it the way you do it, because they should know how to do it, you know, this way of doing, because, you know, entrepreneurs are doers. So we often get trapped in our own way of being and thinking everything can be done the way we would do it. It can't, but we can inspire people from our identity piece to actually allow them to do it better for us this time. So what happens is if you put your systems in place, when it comes to people coming along, they will actually work with you and collaborate with you to take you to the next level. When you don't do that, you can often self-sabotage. And I've seen it so many times, 10, 15 years, businesses staying at this stage where they loads of energy, push forward, strong in identity, get everything moving, 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 hiring people, moving, moving, moving. They don't do it the way I would do it. So they let them go. And now they're back at square one. And this becomes this inevitable loop that you don't break through until you bring your awareness to those three challenges. And what we want to do is always be very clear who we are, what we're for, what we bring to the market, why we bring it to the market, why it helps our customers, who is the right customer, who is the right fit, who am I best to say no to? Then make everything work better, build the systems as you go so things get a little bit easier and create space for growth. You cannot create space for growth until you put the systems in. And when you have the systems in, then you can bring people on board to grow your business. And that's what we want. This is Fanola Howard. This is the second episode of Ask Fanola How. Please leave comments or questions below and I'll see you next week. Have a great day.